don't just go to any ordinary off the shelf shoe store and pay 40 bucks for them because there's a science to this. Right. Science. You can't repeat it enough. There's a science to it. Shoe support and cushioning has been so ingrained in my head as an athlete that it's really hard to take that all away and basically have a bare foot in the sole. When you're when you're born, the argument you know is when you're born, you're not really born with a bunch of stuff between your toes. Right. So th this was originally a boat shoe to give you traction on the boat. The owner of the uh, Vibram company, who's been making bottoms of shoes for many many years, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the first time they're really doing shoes. Um, wanted a shoe that his son could use on the boat. Right that gave you really natural barefoot kind of traction, so it came from that. You know, a lot of ultra runners and marathoners, ultra marathoners wanted uh, a real freedom with their feet when they run, the cross trainers, so they kind of are selling this more as a crossfit, kind of okay. crossfitting type. I mean, these can kind of use for anything. You're going to be okay. doing hiking and stuff, uh, and uh, because it has this extra strap back here, and they put a full rubber bottom, I'm going to recommend the Kila series, which okay. is these guys named after the runner from the 68 Olympics mm -hmm. who ran barefoot. So this is the Kila has a rubbery kind of arch plate in here. Don't be fooled as this is going to give you support. Okay. It's just going to roll shape out to your arch. Okay. And, and we have to use the Vibram <laughs> measuring bit. <then. laughs> Otherwise, it won't be accurate. It goes by a European Vibram side. And I heard that these are a little wanky to get on the first couple of tries. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So the key thing would be is get your foot in there, get the big toe in first, and then kind of line up the other toes, the pinky second, and, just, and then get your whole foot in kind there. Kind of slide your foot back, and the other one. Gotcha. There you go. And what we want is we want the, the toe right near pretty much the end of the shoe here. And that, you, you want it to fit glove like just not pressing in on the big toenail because that will cause a toenail problem. Right. I was More reading kind of that these shoes actually engage the, um, the pinky toe. Is that something you found? Um, this is the first I've heard about anything with the pinky toe engaging the pinky toe, although um, I do believe that there is some benefit from the separating of the toes as far as stabilizing you know, your foot, and especially when you're running and you're pushing, pushing off the toes right. a little bit. Um, but as far as strengthening, getting rid of bunions and strength, I'm not a believer of that. I mean, that it gives you gecko feet. Doesn't climb up a, a tree new, now? It's a new one for me. It um, is different. Is this for everybody? I strongly say not that. Mm -hmm. The change is not coming from the shoe. Mm -hmm. The change is coming from the change in your technique right. that you're doing. So I try to tell people, wear the shoe, but yeah. use your feet. Yeah. I'm a little bit more of a sweater. A um, lot of people five finger socks. Um, less chance of rubbing or blistering in the, sh in, in the five fingers with mm -hmm. the five finger socks. Uh, it keeps your feet a little bit warmer going into the cool weather. Mm -hmm. There is some wicking material to it. Um, the negative would be is the barefoot purist would say that now you're adding another lining between you and the ground so the proprioception of the ground won't be a hundred percent as well. But Your caps are going to be extremely sore the next day, your feet might actually cramp, your arches will be sore, um, and if you don't listen to your body at that point, you probably will probably get either shin splints, tendonitis, or if worse comes to worse, probably a stretch fracture. For, for several weeks, two or three or four days a week, do about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes of running at these shoes, and that's about it. <laughs> oh, wow. I tend to like more often for shorter periods of time. I mean, I usually would recommend do drill runs in these before you actually just go out to your normal runs. So but having good posture, getting off the heel, laying on the ball of the foot, doing a fast cadence, and then a slight bit of falling forward motion so it has a bit faster, and staying relaxed. If you don't stay relaxed while the, the adapting process, mm -hmm. then your brain's gonna take it that this is not what you want. <laughs> so you're doing a bunch of things. You're making up the nerves in your feet and your legs. You're bringing the elasticity back to your calves. Make sure you're landing the legs <laughs> and not hitting it. Okay. That's one of the key things with all the flexible shoes, including vibrams that are very flexible, is uh, strengthening and lengthening that fascia on the bottom of the foot. Um, in general, when you have a really stiff shoe um, and you don't stretch or use the 
fascia on the bottom of the foot, it's going to become... Excited uh, about these shoes, just wanted so to thank like Jeff and Runnergy for joining us today for our first video. And this has been Fitness and Review. Thank you guys for joining us. And it's It is actually very flexible. This material is yep. very Stretchy movable and, yep. and stretchable.